Hi everyone, yesterday's news. Today I have Oige Valverta. He's got a brand new album out today, Shooting from the Hip. How are you today, Oige? I'm fine. Thank you. How are you? I'm fantastic. You know, you seem like you stayed really busy during all of this COVID times. You've put out Red Wolf's album um, right before you guys had a Syrah album count out in late 2019. And then you've got this new album today. Did you feel like you had any slow time last year? <laughs> no, because the COVID happened and tours were canceled and everything. And I was like, okay. You know, we have a saying in Finland that uh, if you will, when, when the enemy is firing you, if you will lay down, you will die. Just got to get up and, you know, kick it back. So, so uh, I just thought that because... I did a lot of things. First, I I started the YouTube channel, which I've been talking a lot. I mean, I had it, but you know, cheap iPhone videos. I had no idea. I started that, learned how to shoot a video, edit a video, light a video, whatever. Then I finally made my thesis, so I graduated from university. That's <laughs> it's, awesome. Because I was there like a decade ago, and then everything happened, banned and stuff, and then it's, I kind of, I never graduated, so I did that, then, then I, yeah, yeah, the, the Red Wolf album, now the solo album, and I, I've learned how to properly mix, I have a soft tube, like, really, console mixing desk and master, I've done so many things that I always say that when I have time, and now I had time, so there was no excuses. So I did. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of things, and I've been jo enjoying every second minute of it. It's been fantastic, and and uh, my wife, wife's been, you know, really, really supportive because she actually said to me that, "Hey, should you graduate?" I mean, and that the YouTube channel was kind of her, 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 like, "Hey, man, you're so good, and you know a lot of stuff. Why don't you, you know, okay." Yeah. So that's so funny. And you know, that that's really funny because you talk about your YouTube channel and it's actually doing really well. I was looking at it yesterday and you've got, you know, just under like 8,500 followers and people are really engaged with your content. You've got yeah. all type, and you're not just doing like playthroughs. You you've got videos on there that actually talk about scales and chords and you're helping people learn. You've got a whole learning thing. And then you talk about different types of gear and then your music as well. I mean, what, what part of your channel do you love doing the most? It's it's all all really fun. Actually, I have almost thirteen thousand subscribers oh, now. Wow, wow! It's been wonder... growing like because I started. I had a couple of hundred last year. Now I have almost 30, 13, one thirteen thousand. So it's, I mean, wow! So uh, it's really because I I uh, I'm always been very passionate about guitar and everything stuff. I mean. Uh, so it, it's just like now I have a diesel VH4 amp here, which I never try a legendary amp. And luckily, many companies and music shops, musics here in Switzerland, they've been really, they, they loan me stuff and send me stuff to try. And, and sometimes I, you know, can keep it. Sometimes I set it back and sometimes my, I end up buying it like a Marshall Plexi. <laughs> so, so that's really, really interesting to try new gear, and then do a video about it, tell about it. And then the, the teaching thing, it's, it's also realized, you know, people ask, you know, scales, and I, I give Skype lessons, and they are more, like, deeper than the, 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 the tutorial videos I have on my channel. And your playthroughs are nice, and then those in the style of, those are really nice because they're basically, so far I've done guitar players that are my personal favorites and and it's been really really fun to you know tell people that hey here's the style and gear and stuff and uh, it's and it's even nicer that people actually have liked what i've done so that's always a bonus when somebody else likes your stuff that you, you set yourself but the most important thing that you like it then if yes. somebody else likes then that's that's just a bonus you know, that, it's true. You've got to be an authentic person when it comes to yeah. whatever you're doing. And in that, nobody's going to follow along on something if they feel that there's nothing genuine in there. And so it's, you just have to do it your own way. And when you actually touched on 
doing the playthroughs of artists that you love your album shooting from the hip that came out today. It's a, isn't it also a lot about that uh, playing homage to the bands and artists that you've loved over the years? Yes. Ex yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the song title is pretty much tells quite, quite a bit. So the, the song, I, the album came out today and the video I did about Pasadena 78. Eddie Van Halen, one of my biggest heroes, passed away, unfortunately. I've been loving Van Halen years before I even started to play guitar. And, and, uh, and you know, the band was they found it in Pasadena. The first album came 78. And Scary Frankie, it's kind of like Mr. Scary George Lynch type of flick. But I, I used Eddie Van Halen's Frankie on the song yeah. <laughs> so, or, or replica. But, but yeah, it's, and it wasn't like I was planning to do an homage because the songs were all that I just wrote for the YouTube videos actually really fast. Okay, I'm going to do a video today. Okay, I'm going to write a song. Okay, what I'm going to write? Like this. All right, cool. And then I just made them into full songs and I, I kind of realized that but, well, that my well, I guess my all my influences always have you know come through Zach Wilde, John Sykes, but uh, Eddie Van Halen not so much, and because uh, I've been a huge fan ever since I was a kid, and that was kind of the only thing that I did consciously. Like I wanna, because I haven't recorded or played that kind of stuff, because people mostly know me as a you know metal player, Shining, Syrah whatever suburban drive gods play the bands I played, but I've always loved 80s hair metal and Van Halen. And now I was like, why haven't I ever actually released an album? Because I have written a bunch of songs in that style. So, and now I just put it out a few of them. And it's funny that you say that because as I put it in and I started playing it, that was my first thought. I'm like, wow, this is not an Oige that people are used to hearing because it was so much more rock and just straight out, guitar enjoyment of a different style and you can absolutely feel it it's not the metal shred it's just a fun listen thank you that, that was because it was a fun to, fun thing to make and that's like music and you know playing guitar it, it's it's about you know expressing yourself good vibes most of the songs i have good well that's one song that isn't the good vibe song but at the end that gave me comfort, the a song for an absent friend. And what if I've understood correct, it has a broad comfort to many other people as well, because it's a sad song about a sad topic. My grandpa who died and my old friend Alexi. Mm. That but but it's it's there's still like hope. <laughs> Cause it's I think it ends on a positive note. You know, and with that part, you know, where you're talking about the people that have been lost and last year was just such a monumental year of losses. I mean, whether it's celebrity wise and mu in music or just our own personal mm -hmm. contacts and friends and family. And, you know, I felt that you could feel just that waning feel in the music and just that kind of a, almost like a tortured feel, but just that, like it just had a progression to kind of going through something. Yeah. It's, I mean, the year, it's been, I mean, I'm, I'm very lucky that, that uh, well, I have worked a lot, but it, it's part of luck too that I have managed to, you know, all this YouTube thing, I actually earn something from the ads and then I have the associated links to Amazon and Thoman and Bulgur and Digital. So to me, this has, this has been actually like financial wise, maybe, not as good as it was, obviously, but, you know, I'm doing okay. And I, I've, I've uh, found a way to, to focus on things that I, like I said, which I've always loved to do, like mix and master and stuff, which I, I, I did the solo album. That was the first album ever I completely did by myself, the, the mixing and mastering. But I understood that. I know that there's, there is people that are really, really struggling because of the the whole thing and isolation thing and and stuff and so so it's it's a but i don't i mean maybe this album will bring some positive energy because it's kind of universal because there's no walkers the walkers is basically my 
guitar. Well, you know, and it's fun because you're saying the energy. And as I was listening to the playthrough, I kept going, there's got to be some chicken picking on this album. And sure enough, it's another chicken song. <laughs> so it was, it was, I didn't even read the, the song titles. I just started playing oh. is the play through and I started hearing, I was like, here it is. Here's the chicken picking. And it threw that energy in there. And I love it when you do that, because there's, you know, I don't think there's a ton of guitarists out there that when they do something solo, that they really think to, to, to go outside of the boundaries of what they normally do. I think that, you know, there's something you do for fun, but they don't want to lay it down. And I love how you did that last album. You did it. And it was, I think it was the chicken picking song was like a John five, um, and there was yeah there was yeah. there was John five and then there was headless chicken and headless then there chicken. was also Helsinki fried chicken yeah the fried chicken yeah yeah and so but you hear that in this album as well but it's it's not as prominent as the last album's tracks were with the chicken pig and it's more um integrated to the sound but I also noticed on this album compared to your first solo there was no vocalists this time. Did you put any forethought into it this time or what was the difference as to why you didn't do any vocalists this time? Well, I thought about it because some of these songs could actually work really well with vocalists. For example, Pathadina 78, one review said that I, the reviewer could hear David Lee Roth. <laughs> I, I could too. <laughs> so... That was the thing, but you know, this isolation, COVID, I mean, yeah, we did Red Wolf's album, Isolated yeah, yeah. and stuff, but then I just, because I was writing the, or kind of rewriting the songs based on those one minute demos that I have my YouTube intros, and then the melodies and stuff just kind of started to happen, and I was like, I'm going to do this all by myself, like everything, and I have a great voice, but it <laughs> it ruins itself when it comes out from my <laughs> mouth, <laughs> to put it nicely. So I had some ideas, and then I was like, "No, I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna ruin this album by trying to sing." Because I mean, you can auto tune and everything, but I don't know. I just had a feeling because, I, and I've never done an instrumental album like completely, and yeah. and that's kind of like ticking a box. Of course, you you know you're a lead guitarist. You have, should have an instrument. So that was that was the the thing, and I wanted to kind of the dogma was kind of like that. I'm gonna do everything by myself, and if I can't sing, then I don't sing. So and you did everything by yourself. So I have yeah. to ask because are you a drummer? Uh my first instrument was drums. I started with drums, but the drums, even though they seem really real, they are programmed yeah. drums. But it's this tune track, Superior Drama Three. It's it's so amazing, and and because the way I did it, I, I kind of played with my keyboards like simple drums because I know how to play drums. Like I mean, you know, not professionally, but but I I survived, so I play them, and then I. My simple beats, I transfer the MIDI files to the superior drummer, and then it suggests me beats that I could match. And I have a big library, thanks to Tundrak, I'm, I'm indoors. They, they sent me like, I don't know, 400 gigabytes of nice. stuff. So, so most of the, the stuff that Tundrak, the superior drummer, suggested me was played by John Tempesta. The Rob Zombie drummer. Yeah, yeah. And he's also and, with and, the Colts. Yeah. Yeah, he, yeah, with the Colts. Because he has this style. And because, you know, even though I play with the keyboard, but I, I kind of like this Tempest, Tommy Lee. So it, the, the AI is really smart because it, it suggested me like, man, this is just what I was looking for. So actually on many songs, Mr. Tempesta kind of plays drums because he played those drums for tune track, yeah. those beats. So... In a way, and then I edited them like, okay, there's too much kick drum here. Okay, this feel is a little bit too. Then I just edited the the MIDI files, but it's it's basically kind of like real drum or tempest, and and I didn't edit anything to like a grid, like that everything is not because I wanted it to. Because what I miss about albums back in the days, because they were organic, they sounded like the band was in a room, but nowadays everything is just so. So I, I wanted to have that kind of loose feel, band feel, even though it's me and myself and program drums. But. 
but you know, I, that's funny because I think the, when we met a few years back, when you guys came out for the first time with Syrah and I asked you about mm-hmm. your past, I don't think I ever asked if you played drums before. So that's a new piece of information for me and probably will be for other people out there that didn't realize that was your first instrument. Yeah. I mean, like, I guess we never talk. Oh, yeah, don't, I, don't I, I started. Yeah. yeah, I started with drums, and then my I played them for a, I don't know six months, year. And then when it came apparent that my parents are not gonna buy me a drum set, <laughs> then I was like, okay, maybe I switched to something quieter. So I got a nylon string <laughs> acoustic. Wait, so you didn't try to be like Alex Landenberg and build a drum set out of cardboard. No. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I, of, of course, you know, when I was a kid, I liked to hear, but, I, but my, my music teacher in in, uh, in school was, was really supportive. So she led me to practice at our, you know, music class after school hours, before I went to ice hockey practices. Yeah. I stayed there, banged for, you know, and then she actually gave me some lessons like basic beats and stuff. So I, I did, yeah, so drums were the, were the so- first thing. The instrument, but I guess my guitar playing because I beat the sh- you know quite hard, so maybe that's that. Because so let's do, let's talk about the guitar playing because I've had a look at your pedal board and I know that you you don't go overboard with what you have for effects and stuff for your own sound. What all did you put into this album this time, and how many of your guitars did you work with throughout this album? Well, the, most of it it was, it was really simple. It was a few. So my ESP and Tokai guitars, let's post. And the reason why a few, because I, I have a, them in different tunings and I have songs in different tunings. Some work better in standard, some in low. And then it was basically bus super overdrive into Marshall JZM 800. That's it. And very <laughs> like, simple. Very simple. I used a couple of amps, Plexi, like legendary Marshall Plexi on, on some leads and stuff. But 90% it's the the bad boy, which is its nickname, the M. And it's also it, a song. It's also a song. So that's yeah, because and the bad boy is also it's a, it refers to John Sykes, one of my favorite guitar players who released Bad Boy Live and he wrote Bad Boys song with it's David White. Carradale for White Snake. And then there's the, then there's the amp which I used. So it, it all, all ties in. Yeah. It all ties in. So, but, but yeah, I have effects, but they're, they're very occasionally on. Basically, the only effect on the album was wah wah. Yeah. And everything else, delays and stuff, I, I did when I mixed the album. But it's, and m- on many songs, it's not even the boss o- super overdrive. It's just guitar into old Marshall, crank it up and hit it hard. Yeah. And it, it. It, it's funny because. I have, I've seen a lot of your videos where you talk about tips on how to do things and you have like this poor man's video on how to kind of like play things. And it's interesting to see that I think a lot of people probably think that, oh, there's so many effects thrown into your album, but this is actually your own hand technique and your mastery of guitar that you do to make your sound. Yeah, that's, that's great story. Still look at their told this. He was uh, playing with Larry Carlton. And after the show, they were talking. Larry Carlton's guitar was on the stage. And the fan came to Larry Carlton. Man, that guitar sounded great today. And your amps. And then Larry was looked at the stage. And, oh, so how do they sound now? <laughs> well, there is no sound. Exactly. Because yeah. <laughs> amplifier amplifies and... So it's it's really here because, and surprisingly many people don't realize that because basically no matter what amp I play, I sound like myself. And many people when they play through my gear, they're like, "Man, where's the overdrive? Where's the distortion that you have?" It's you know, we gotta, <laughs> and they're like, "But there's so little." I was like, "Yeah, it's about." hitting the strings because sometimes people say that uh, yeah it's easy for you because you have so much gain but I, I don't and when they play my with my rig they're like oh it's this dry <laughs> it's like yes you gotta you gotta you know because I, I like the the dynamics but it's it's really 
really, and you know, my friend Alexi Laiho, who passed away, I played with his rig. I didn't sound like Alexi, I sounded like myself, and Alexi played with my gear, because he, he, he uh, you know, we were, you know, fearing on both of our albums. He, he was on, on one guy's play albums. He played with my gear, and he just sounded like himself. He didn't do anything. He just pulled his guitar, and he was like, that's a liar. <laughs> I pulled the same amp, but it sounded like me. Like, <laughs> same settings, everything. It's, yeah, it's here. And there right now are probably a lot of guitar players and learning people like myself that are probably crying, thinking, how am I ever going to sound that good? Because they're probably, the light's coming on going, wait, you didn't use a, this pedal. You will well, use all your own technique. Mind blown. <laughs> yeah. And because I think it, the internet, it, it's good and bad. Because now, now people, you know, okay, this guy used this, that. When I get that, I will sound like him. But when I was a kid, we didn't have internet. I didn't have a clue what people were using. I didn't even have an amp. Or I had this tiny, small amp. And But I never thought that the reason why I don't sound as good like Zach White is because of this amp. Because I thought that I, I'm not as good a player. And then... I practiced like eight to 10 hours a day for years. And then, I don't know, four, after four or five years, I was like, now I'm starting to sound like I hear in my head and my idols. But it was never about, I still had that small hand. And then it was just, but now many people nowadays, they think that uh, it, it's, it's the gear. I mean, if you're a good player, a good gear will make it sound even better. But if you're a bad player, there's no gear in the world that makes you sound good. Nope, nope, nope. And I, it's so funny because I actually have been learning and I just upgraded to a different practice amp and I got a black star and it came with all these effects. And I'm like, oh, that's nice and all, but I don't really want to rely on those things as I'm learning yeah. to try to make myself sound better. But you are right. If you sound bad, you sound bad. <laughs> there's... Yeah, you just sound bad, but louder. Yes, yes. Much, much louder. <laughs> and I, I practiced and I still practice without anything. Just yeah. with, just you, with that. I, I, I don't have anything when I practice or when I usually when I write. I, I just play like this. Then you really hear what you're doing. And if it sounds good like this, it will sound good, but no matter the amp. Yeah. And, you know, you talk about when you practice today, do you practice every day still? What's your routine now? Because I think a lot of people, the younger get, kids that are learning to play would love to know what you're still doing now at your level of professionalism. Well, yeah, I mean, because I, I play every day. I, I wrote a song today. So obviously that that is practicing. But actually today I, I went through some scales in a long time just for, you know, I guess I was waiting for some you know, attachment to load or whatever. And then I just grab the guitar and, you know, you have just played it. And with a metronome, because it's, it's good to do that every once in a while. Basically, because I play so much every day, so I don't per se like practice. But let's say I'm doing a, like some in the style video and I need to learn a song or a solo, then I guess that's, practicing you know just just listening like, like oh man that's that's fast <laughs> like then then but when I was a kid I, I practiced a lot and and usually always without an amp and if I if I had an amp we have this saying in 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 Finland hopefully nobody's offended but it's a clean sound and then you have overdriven sound and then in the middle it's the most fucked up sounds because it's not clean and it's like really you it, you can hear all your mistakes. We call that a pussy sound because <laughs> <laughs> that's very revealing. It's not clean. It, it's just like you hear everything and there's no sustain. And when I practiced and I, when I practiced, I practiced with with that if I use an amp. So the most nastiest effed up sound. And if I can play the stuff and sound good and make it like sustain and everything, then I it's it's like you know then when I hook to my 
you know, Marshall is like, oh man, this is easy. <laughs> you know, like, you know. <laughs> So, That's awesome. But I never well, practice with those amps with lots of gain. Always with without any amp or just that 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 nasty. <laughs> you learn something new every day. Yeah. The, the, the term <laughs> is much funnier in Finnish. What, throw it out to us in Finnish. Ilusandi. See, it's it's not as in <laughs> in English the, it could that could be quite offensive <laughs> to yeah. some, but it's. <laughs> But it, it means kind of the same, but, yeah. but there's also this another element of, because when you say that in Finland, they know that you're talking about this, <laughs> this sound. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. So <laughs> aside from your new album that's out today, again, Shooting from the Hip, everybody should go listen to it now. You know, it's a great album. What's going on with Syra? Well, <clears throat> there is European tour coming in October, which was announced a while ago. Hopefully it will it will happen. There was a, a couple of other bands. We were like the, in the middle slot, the main band was a Twilight Force. So it's their tour and we are, we're opening. And then there was some other band. And then we have shows in, in Finland in August. And I think there was some other Scandinavian or Nordic dates, but you know how it is, how it has been. It looks like finally things are starting to happen. And the Japan tour, which was postponed, I don't know, three or four times, hopefully that will happen. And so our management and, and a booking agency, they, they are working. And But, you know, since the world is open, there's obviously lots of the the, the area of the touring, or the, it's pretty crowded. So... Yeah, <laughs> we'll we'll see what happens. But yeah, so that's like, and and then we've been writing songs with Jake. I have probably like 20 demos. Jake has some, and we we kind of some of them are more finished than others. Some of them not, and some of actually are from some of my YouTube videos because uh Jake Jake uh, heard a couple of the, them. They're like, man, don't don't that that song's for Syra on that video. That's great. I already have I an can- idea. I can absolutely see him absolutely say that. No, 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 no. That's the. Yeah. No. <laughs> hey, dude. Yeah. yeah. That's song yeah. you put on the album. It's fucking great. Don't use it. Save it for Sire. I have no idea. Roger, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, but I kind of wrote that because there's a couple of those harmony songs, like a little bit Gotham for Sweden sound. So they're, they are left for Sire. And we actually started to work with Jake, like this remote thing, but uh, it's. We didn't have the vibe because the way we we write, it's the previous album. And, you know, I go to Sweden, then we sat down, uh, you know, bounce the ideas and it's collaboration. So we're kind of like, first, we want to do some touring or as much as possible. Just the No Halos in Hell tour was a little bit <laughs> shortened. Very short. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so uh, we want to continue with that. And then we're gonna because what we did with no halos right after letters to myself tour uh me and jake wrote like two or three weeks and then i flew to sweden and we had like seven or eight songs then i went back and then i went through again because we were like the touring we were so like pumped from the touring and we we saw what worked and what not so we want to do that again you know have a great tour tours then wrote stuff write stuff and then get back i mean because but i already have 20 songs maybe there's something for 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 syra in the future but i think we're kind of the idea is just to start from a clean table and use those there's a couple of songs that everybody has liked what jake has written what i have written and those couple of people <laughs> okay yeah that that's syra i know <laughs> I can hear him in my head right now. Absolutely. <laughs> and you know, it's, it's funny. He's been putting out those, um, he's been in some movie tracks and remaking yeah, them. And, yeah. and my grandkids are his number one fan. They, every time something, or they'll just come up, Hey, can we watch Jake sing such and such song? And it's 
it's like I've just sent him a message. Hey, my kids, grandkids are your absolute number one fans. Like they just love what you do. Keep doing that. I mean, they love the other stuff, but when it comes to relating with other style of music too, it's, it's really cool to see him crossing those boundaries with every direction with age groups and the kids catching that. Yeah. Really yeah. Cool. I mean, he's, he's a great guy, fantastic singer and songwriter. And I guess partly why he is so good writing those catchy melodies is because he, he, he listens to that kind of stuff. He, he knows that stuff and it's in his, I don't know, in his blood. I, I'm, I'm more of a, well, obviously a guitar oriented guy and, and stuff, but I really love to write with him because he comes up with ideas that I never thought or, or sometimes it's like, hey man, why this is so complex? Why don't you use those? I have a great melody for it. It goes like this and Thank you, sir. <laughs> so. but you, and I think that's great because your style of sound with Syrah, it's you guys pull your influences from so many different places. And I know when you guys were here out on the road and we were sitting in a restaurant somewhere and we were listening to the music and there was a conversation going on about how we don't just listen to this genre. I mean, we listen to everything and you, cause you pull so many inspirations yeah. from every place. And I think that's probably one of the things that makes you guys so well-rounded on sound is that not only just the players involved in the group and coming from different groups and different aspects, but just the other additional outward influences that you have. Yeah. I mean, cause a great song is a great song, no matter the genre. I, I, when I drive in a car with my car, I love to listen to country and Southern rock. Then occasionally I, I really like, you know, you know, crank the bass and listen to some, you know, NWA, like, like old school hip hop and, and, and rock and metal. It's a great song. It's a great song. And, and, uh, I, well, I think it, it, it's, it's, a it's a richness for, to our band that we, we all like so many, so many different stuff and, and I'm probably metal is that. The, the music style that we listen the least like because we do we make that music that's what comes naturally so when i work with let's say a song or in the studio like eight hours you know playing heavy riffs and the last thing i want to do is to li listen to someone else doing that i'm more like okay yellow brick road elton john ah yeah and it's so funny i love it when i ask artists you know what was the last album they bought or what are they listening to today and a lot of people are like I don't listen to my own genre or why do I need to listen to something new? I've got these great albums that I grew up with and, you know, they just don't want that different influence, I guess, coming in to, to change their sound when it's their own genre. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. And because what happens many times to me and many other people like, uh, no hell is in hell. I, I had this great riff and idea and then I presented it to, to Jake and Jesper. <laughs> Jesper was like, Man, that's great, but I wrote that 20 years ago. So, so he, he was, I don't remember what influence song, but he, and Jesper didn't remember. Yeah, it's, it's, and then we actually dig it out. I, I was like, oh, wow, okay. I'm, just I'm, I'm sitting here imagining the look on his face, kind of like, yeah, I'm like, dude, hey, check out this new cool reason. He's like, oh, yeah. I think I wrote that on the claim and order album. It's one of our, I was like, then it was like, oh man. So, you know, so when you listen to some other genres, that's, you know, isn't gonna, hopefully it's, it's, uh, it's to prevent that from happening, but that happens. And that was, it was funny, like, you know, it was, you know, Jasper is, is a you know, humble guy. Hmm, great reef on the idea indeed. I think, I think I've done that. <laughs> I could be wrong. But <laughs> I can see him saying that. <laughs> That's so funny. And it, it is, it's really funny when you say that too, because I, I think at this point in music, Everything has been done at some point. And I know when I get new albums to review, I'm sitting and listening and quite often I hear something and I'm just like, wow, those, that exact chord progression came from another song I've heard. And I, I'm immediately thinking, okay, which artist was and I'll go back and I'll find an album and I'll hear the exact same thing. And I'm like, dude, this has been done before, but you know, it's not like they ripped the whole thing off. It's just some of those things that just stick with you from a great song end up yeah. being something I mean, else. 
this chord progression is is the probably the the, the most most used. <laughs> hey tonight, we got break the drum, oh brother. What if God was one of us? So that's yep. and we have used that too with Syrah, because it's always like, okay, well now we're, we're finding a hard time, you know. And it was like, well, why don't we? And Dave was like, because I was trying to do something like, and then Dave was like, why don't you use the chord progression? Oh, you mean the? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, because it's, they're so easy to write melodies because it, it's, you know, natural minor scale. It, everything sounds great on, on that progression. So we use that too, and, and many, many songs, but it's, it's the small details, you know, notes and, and, and stuff, what, what makes the difference and how, how you, and obviously the li lyrics and stuff. So, yeah. uh, but, you know, you got 12 notes, you know, that's, they've been used quite many times <laughs> yeah yeah and then it's even it gets to that weird like you've got the the chord progressions and then it's sometimes just the the overflow and like depending on what genre you listen to or what region of the world you listen to it seems like sometimes you'll hear something and it it's almost like you think it's another writer because they're so similar in their styles that you just can't escape it and i i've i quite often go gosh i really thought so and so was writing this album but it turns out to be this other person but i see it because you know they're same genre and but it's not like you have to be really clear to say, hey, I don't think you're ripping anybody off. It's just that's how it goes. There's only so many notes you can use. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So any plans to do any live shows at all for your solo project when, you know, when you guys get a chance or maybe a few shows here and there? Uh, I haven't really thought about it because, you know, Syra is number one, 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 one band and hopefully mm -hmm. we'll be able to go to our soon. And then... Uh, the Red Wolf album, which which I did with Adde and a, a couple of uh, uh, Finnish uh, legends, so to say. So we've been asked and we've been offered to do some shows and stuff, but uh, obviously the situation is what it is. So first it's Syra, then maybe if the schedules work, because Sammy from Red Wolf, he has you know, lost the society. So we all will be pretty busy. So, and but you never know. I mean, I could do a show with a laptop in a corner of a bar for my solo album. I just, you know, mute the guitar tracks and, you know, just that's actually probably when we are going on tour, I've been thinking that should I do kind of like these guitar clinics things? Because I've been doing those, those uh, actually quite a lot back in the day. They're funny, you know, intimate, small clubs and, and so, but with the whole band, I don't know, maybe but not in the foreseeable future. Yeah. Next time you guys are back stateside, yes, do some clinics because I know of so many friends here just locally that love your style that, that, that just that blows their mind that how you play. And they've even said, oh my gosh, you sat down with him. I mean, you, you sat down with Oige Valverta and it's like, you know, he's a God. <laughs> and it's like, I think there would be so many people who would take your clinics because just that to learn and to get that intimate time with you, to ask you those questions that, I think yeah. that that would be a great thing that definitely if you get the opportunity to do the clinics, especially over here when you guys are back next time, please do. Yeah, it's it's, it's funny because when I was a kid, there weren't many of those. But whenever there was, uh, I was there, the kid, you know, because it's, it's very, because it's, it's, it's cool to now with YouTube and stuff. But it, it's, I remember when I, you know, I watched some whatever guitar players like instructional video. Then when I actually, Marty Friedman, I think was it was in a small place in Helsinki. And when I actually saw him playing, it was like, you know, I was, you know, like, it's like, wow. That's, and, you know, questions and, you know, such a nice guy and he answered and shared some tips and, you know, I, it's, yeah, it's a fun thing to do because I remember vividly how, how cool it was. To, yeah. You know. you know, and I just, I just did the, um, we just had the guitar and drum festival here in Seattle area. It's like in Tacoma oh. and Rudy Sarzo was up and did a clinic and Nita Strauss was here. And it was really cool to sit down and just watch them play and be able to listen to people asking questions to get those techniques of things they've always wanted mm -hmm. to know. And to have these people of those calibers to sit down and explain things to you. 
And I think you can grab information and and technique from everyone. And so it's those moments are really important to people that yeah. are players and just fans alone that want to know what goes yeah. in your secret sauce. Yeah, yeah, it's it's cool. And people been asking actually quite a lot for me to do this YouTube live things, but I haven't yet because, to be honest, I have no idea how to set one up. Me either. <laughs> I have friends who do them, and I'm like, I'm so intimidated by the all this technology live stuff. It's like. <gasps> yeah. So, and what if, um, what if you want to edit something out? Really, I mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't. You know, I, I leave some mistakes and some, you know, on those videos because that's just, you know, human. I, I, you know, I don't, I don't like correct afterwards the songs because some of the stuff it's like, whoa. I guess, but what, what anyone here and said when you make a mistake, do it again, and then people think that. You, may, you meant it. You know, and it's funny you say that because Nita Strauss, you know, someone had asked about, you know, playing in front of people because they're not quite there and they feel intimidated. She's like, get up on stage and make those mistakes. Don't be afraid. Just She's like, you pick up your guitar and within that first 30 days, do your first show. Like that kind of, that kind of stuff, you know, she says the same thing. Everybody makes mistakes. And Rudy said the same. Everybody makes mistakes. Just keep making them. Yeah, and yeah. That, I, yeah. Mean, I, I mean, I, because I like to kind of have fun on stage and, you know, dance and stuff and sometimes when i've listened to some recordings i'm like oh maybe i should focus more on the playing and not the dancing <laughs> but nobody in the audience complained because i mean who wants to see do you want to see a guy doing like this Ooh, or <laughs> you know i mean there's nothing wrong with that there's a time and place for that but if if i want to Go if I'm going to, going to see a metal or rock show, I want to, you know, right. people. To, I don't care if it's like mistakes or whatever. It's the the whole. If I want to hear a, hear a perfect playing a recording, I stay home and listen to the albums. But if I want to see a show, someone really kicking ass, the, the live is. So yeah, don't be afraid of mistakes. Of of course you should, you know, try to play as well as possible. But but. This is also a thing that uh, I've said many times. If you have two guitar players, one of them plays perfectly, but it's a little <laughs> bit like that. And the other is like, woo, rock and roll. Then when you ask people oh, which one is better, most of the people will say that the guy who was woo, <laughs> he's better. <laughs> Cause, just because it was more entertaining, I guess, you know, that yeah. the, just the, the visual entertainment. The visual, I mean, it's really, yeah. really important, the, the, the visual. Yeah. Yeah, I agree because there are sometimes you go to shows and people just stand there the whole time and it's like, this is boring. <laughs> and you want to see something fun. And it's not like, you know, you expect people to be running marathons on stage, but look like you're enjoying it. <laughs> but, but, but yeah, and Mike Stern, awesome guitar player, this the jazz guy. I mean, he, he plays like, Really, but it's because the music is so hard, and I enjoyed that show. I love that show, but because I was, it was a jazz club in Copenhagen a few years ago. I wasn't going to a middle, so I knew, and I, I would have been disappointed if Mike Stern suddenly would have, you know, thrown like this and played <laughs> a bit sloppy. But he was really, and that was amazing. So there's a time and a place. So yes. I hopefully not nobody get me get me wrong that. But but the, the the stuff I do rock and metal I think that's more depends on your on your band if your your thing is to you know we're gonna do this then that's that's just just fine fine but I mean but. there's that and I mean if you're Dark Funeral or Demi Berger you're not gonna be doing that running around the stage it's more that you know no. you've got to it's the theatrics yeah 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 because yeah. yeah, I remember. When I played in Shining, I, I sometimes got a bad eye from Nicholas because I was having too much fun. <laughs> he was yeah. like, dude, like, oh, yeah. Yeah, and instead he's got the blood dripping off of him and he's trying to be very dramatic and dark. Yeah, and I'm there like... <laughs> <laughs> dancing around. He's like... <sighs> but on the other hand, he said that he, he loved that. So he, he's a big, you know, he always said that sometimes he, he comes to me and you he, hey, okay, do that sunset, sunset strip thing. What? You know this, what you do. <laughs> <laughs> the what you do out on Syrah. We see that on Syrah tours. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah. I was Nick, I was like, hey, that sunset strip thing. What do you mean? <laughs> well, that, you know, and then you play like, 
okay. <laughs> Be How, careful. What you ask. Let me ask you. So you like to do all the dancing and the moving around stuff during your shows. How long did it take you when you started playing to feel comfortable or like to even to like break away from just playing to actually moving around? Like during a show or in general? Or just, like, just when you, like even from when you started playing from very early on, how long did it take you to feel comfortable to move around and play at the same time? <clears throat> oh, I remember the, the first shows. Man, I was like, you know, damn if I make a mistake. But then I quite soon realized that People don't care. They don't hear if you make a mistake. And I was like, I was like, F this, I'm going to have fun. If somebody doesn't like it, then that's their problem. Because if I'm having fun, that's, you know, and well, luckily, it kind of translates to audience. To like, hey, that dude is having fun. So Absolutely. quite, quite uh, soon. I think, uh, you know, and, you know, in the early days, probably a bit too much <laughs> with the cost of the quality of the playing. <laughs> I remember doing all these neck things and teeth and whatever that I saw my idols do. And <laughs> probably, luckily, there, there was no internet and stuff. But <laughs> I'm pretty sure it looked a lot better than it, than it sounded. I, and I've seen you do the teeth thing very, you know, most recently. I think it was Sweet and Rock you did the teeth thing. And I'm thinking... Are you going to break your teeth off? <laughs> Please don't break your teeth Actually, off. Actually, I have a... Uh, yes, a previous that. <laughs> yeah, that's the... Yeah, the, I always wonder, are you like, Please don't break your yeah. teeth. Yeah, uh, my other teeth is, is actually an implant because I, I, you know, I was an ice hockey player. So my, my bottom row has been replaced and this because I got a few hits. So, so uh, <laughs> yeah. But the, the, the one, like healthy teeth it's not also it's not that healthy because i've been doing that because sometimes the, the strings got stuck oh, <laughs> I can't even you, imagine, don't like... realize, you don't realize when you're in the moment because you have so you know like woo -woo, and then after the show you, you could be like oh why, why am i bleeding <laughs> i've i've been injured by the strings in it man does that hurt <laughs> it hurts like I, and i see people that'll play through like blood all over their guitars and stuff and i'm just like I'm not at that point yet. I would probably stop and cry because it just hurts so bad. I, I have a this this part of the finger. I, it's very like hard. But I remember when I I was younger when I hadn't played so much because I hit quite hard. So many times my you know, the, the finger, oh. whatever this your part cuticle is called, side, yeah, yeah, it's like you know blood and stuff and really hurt. But nowadays it's 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 really like. Uh, well, it's thick. You've got <laughs> like the calluses, my, yeah. Like, like the because I've been eating so, so much. So uh, after a, you know, usually after summer vacation, after two or three weeks, when I'm that's probably the only time that I'm, I don't play that much. So the first days are always like, oh man, but. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's been so great catching up with you and like talking technique with you is always so much fun. I do have to ask you before we go, because I want to make sure we talk about your album. So people know shooting from the hip, you guys can order this. What format is the album available on? It, it, it's digital only. I mean, okay. I, I thought about doing physicals and stuff, but it's, it's actually really quite expensive and for it to be profitable or make sense fun, financial wise, you should, uh, you know, order a big chunk of albums. And yeah. I, I didn't want to invest like, you know, 10K and then have a bunch of albums without me knowing, you know, who's going to buy them. Am, am I going to get them distributed? Because I, I probably could have get, uh, you know, some label to finance this and release it. But again, I wanted to do it you on know, my own, like I did the first and the Red Wolf album. Because I... I've actually gained some some profit with those albums because because there's not no one you know checking anything in be in between. So I, I I get all. I mean, Spotify. You have to have quite have a well. The first album has to stream like over a million now. So there's been some you know. So uh, what was that like? A hundred dollars? <laughs> like I mean, that's kind of the we. Everyone jokes about the Spotify. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. No, but 
yeah, that, that was the the only because well, physical, it's it's nice. I mean, I don't even have any more CD player, and the, the vinyl player I don't have here. I own it, but it's in in the warehouse. I still have the vinyls, but I don't know. Maybe if the demand is big, like Ola England, you know, he has a you know probably half a million subscribers. You know, he 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 makes physical, but obviously, yeah. if you have half a million subscribers, if like ten percent of those buy, then it's it's it makes sense to actually manufacture those and stuff. Yeah. So maybe if the channel grows and whatever and, and people really start to they, and that there's a demand then obviously of course because I have all the rights for the for my both soul and for Red Wolf so it's just a matter of me doing that but I, obviously I don't want to just throw money out yeah. and work because there's a lot of work involved because the albums they don't just appear on stores no and that's actually a very smart way to do it i think a lot of people they go into it kind of lose their butts on it because they over project what they're going to sell and it just people don't consume media the same way no no because you know we've talked about this i I used to work 10 years at universal music the spine farm records as an a and r so i'm kind of i i know pretty well the the business aspect of the music business yeah so 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 i i my expectations are all like very realistic so but and i guess that's why i managed to make a living kind of so you know it, well, of course it's cool to do this and do that and release that but then you know before we realize like oh i just spent like 20k and there's no guarantee that i will get any of it back no. but so yeah you have to there's music and there's the business and they're both together you can't do one without the other and i think a lot of people really forget that yeah 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 i mean you can do music at your home and never <laughs> release it and never play it to anyone then it's music but if you want to you know put it out to other people to listen and enjoy then you have sold yourself <laughs> then it's business. <laughs> yeah, that's the business. Like if you're in the industry, you're in the business. Make sure you take the business side of it seriously because you can't do one without the other. If you're Yeah. Yeah, unless you want to keep that day job all the time. <laughs> so, any last words for any of the fans out there whether it's Syra, Red Wolf, any of the past bands you've been in or just your solo project? Well, I must say that I'm very thankful for for all the you know attention and, and support and nice words what uh, everybody has you know youtube and written to me because because uh, it's really because I've, I've got messages from people that my songs the cyrus songs have touched like really deeply and even saved some lives you know because our songs have given them hope, but it goes the other way around. It's really, you know, heartwarming to to hear and read those those stories. Because at the end of the day, it's it's like, you know, what, what matters is 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 uh, at least to me that if you've uh, managed to do some good to someone, then yeah. You know, you're already a winner. So, it, it, so it's it, it's it's really it goes it goes both both ways. So, so that that's you know sometimes you think that fuck this uh, like well, but then you get like a comment that man, you know, I heard your new new song, it you know saved my day or my life, and it's and everything is like, oh wow. <laughs> so it wasn't you know so. I guess my, you know, work means something to someone or yeah. lots of things to hopefully many people. Yeah. And I know I'm one of those that the Syrah albums have touched me in different ways. Like the first album was so hard hitting and I connected with it just based on my own personal life experiences that fed through a lot of what was going on in that album. A lot of other people felt it in different ways. And I've connected with people that have just 
they've cried over albums and experiences and your guys' music is definitely does that. So way to go. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. And so, okay, this has been a great conversation, guys. Shooting from the hip is out today. Go stream it everywhere. You guys can pick up your digital copy if you want to buy it and own it yourself. Please do support artists that are making music. And Oike, thanks a lot again for a great conversation. Thank you, Diane. It was a pleasure. Thanks.